have right here a package that was sent in to, to me by a fellow Adam enthusiast. He contacted, well, he posted on Facebook that he was having problems with his system. And I said, if you wanted to pay it shipping, ship it to me. I'll take a look at it, see if I can fix it for you. So he did. It appears what he did is he plugged in the SD version of the data drive into a working system and it stopped being a working system. Black screen. Wouldn't work. Continuously reset, couldn't make it work. Eventually got it to a ColecoVision screen, but that's it. So he sent it to me. I told him, let me take a look at it, see what I can do. And he sent some books in here just to make sure it could go media mail. Mastering the Basics of Russian. Oh, oh. Don't need to learn Russian anymore. What else we got in here? PC97 Hardware Designer's Guide. I'm not sure how that's relevant to the Atom. It's never been opened, the CD, so I guess nobody's designed hardware. It's from Microsoft, so Microsoft is saying, hey, here's how you design your hardware. Now I need to dig down inside of all the peanuts. Peanuts are good to ship the computers in. Just always make sure you wrap it up so that the peanuts can't get into the computer. And it appears he did do that, and I am getting these all over the floor. I'm trying to gently take this thing out without making too much of a mess. There we go. Getting there. Oh, he didn't wrap it too good. So it appears that peanuts have gotten inside the CPU, so that's going to be messy. But I think I can probably get this out of the way here. Let's see. Lift this up. Set this off to the side on the floor. I don't know if there's anything else in there. I told him just send me the CPU. And that appears to be all there is. Down a big mess of packing peanuts all over the floor. So I'm going to clean that up and then we'll open this up. Okay, fast forward through that initial cleanup process there. And now let's see what we have here. I told him to send me just the CPU. I didn't need the data drives, didn't need keyboard, power supply, or anything like that, because I have all that obviously. That's a very, very clean system, very clean. Looking it over, I don't see anything that stands out to me as bad. This is absolutely a clean system. Missing a screw there. Right there. But nothing else. Oh. This makes my system look old and dirty. So let's plug her in. I'm going to set this one off to the side for a second. Unplug my system here. Well, I don't need to unplug everything. I just need to unplug. Well, yeah, I do. Unplug the keyboard. Unplug power. Unplug video. All right. Bring this out here. Plug that in. Plug you in here. And you, and I'm plugging the keyboard in here. Alrighty then. I'm going to turn on the capture over here. I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of it, if anything, but we'll see if we can capture it. I feel like I put a capture system to turn on. I have a feeling I know what is wrong with this, but I'm going to do my basic um, troubleshooting first. Is that on or off? Let's see. Was that on? I'm reaching down here and turning my power onto my system, and that was already on, so you shut off for now. I want to turn it on with the capture card on. So what I got here is I just got the printer plugged into the CPU. 
I've got it connected via the monitor out to the monitor and also to the capture card. I've got the keyboard plugged in here. I didn't bother with anything else because if I can get it into Smart Writer, then I'm not concerned about the rest. So we're just waiting for the capture card to come up. It just turned on over here. So let me bring this up over here. Sorry, I should have had this ready. But I wasn't thinking about capturing wooded outputs. But let's see what we got here. I'll fast forward through this. All right, got the capture system turned on. We're ready to go here. Let's turn this on and see what we get, if anything. We got a blink, but that was it. Nothing on the reset. Resetting the ColecoVision is good, but nothing on the resetting to the Atom. So what it looks like, it's the Atom board is the issue, which I ex expected it to be. But since we are getting the ColecoVision, that's a good sign. Do I have a ColecoVision game? Let me... Uh, no, I don't have... Um, actually, I may have something here. All right, so I went and chased it down. ColecoVision cartridge. I believe it may be Smurfs. Not sure. But I just want to test that portion of it. Let's just see what we got going here. Turn it on, we get nothing on the Atom. But since we do get the ColecoVision starting up here, Donkey Kong Jr., all right. Since we do get that, we do know the video processor works. We know that the CPU is working. So it's all down on the Atom board. Get ready to play one. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong button. I'm pushing the one instead of the jump. Yeah, I suck at this game so bad. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I died. Anyways, we do know the ColecoVision's top board works. So we're going to take it over on the bench, take it apart. We're going to see if we can diagnose what's going on inside. Okay, so now we're over here on the bench. I got the CPU here. I'm going to take it apart. Remove the cover. That's the first thing that's going to get removed. Now, to take this apart, we need to remove this front face first. There's normally four screws here, but this one only has three because the guy who sent it to me must not put one back in and he put this wrong screws in different places luckily I, I wonder yeah he's lucky it didn't bulge through anywhere this front face uses small screws inside there's big and small screws depending on what section it is I'll show you as I'm going along or probably when I assemble it I'll show you which screws go where ColecoVision like to modify or like to not modify what is it vary their screws that they use so that comes off there <laughs> let's sit over here so I don't knock it off on the floor make more noise now there are I believe is a seven or eight one two three four five six seven screws we got to remove here deep down inside if you hear people talking outside that's my neighbor in the office building here going in and out putting stuff in storage Talky talky. So we get all these seven screws removed. And as I said, this is a very, very clean system. Very nice. It's like this is like a. Did you not put a screw in there? Oh, there's a screw in that hole. If every now and again you see like something come in here, that's my bald head sticking through the camera. So just so you wonder, it's not like my bare shoulder or anything. It's my head. Every now and again I want to look down close and it's easier for me to just put my head over there and look down instead of lifting the thing up. Alright, one there. And one more right here. They built these things like tanks. No little clips or anything for the click or for the atom. Now the screw should fall out. And look how clean that is inside. Seriously, this is one of the cleanest systems I've seen in a while. Come on, screws out of the hole. They're sticking. I mean, I could just leave them there. Huh, you know what? I'm going to leave them there for right now. 
but we're on a mission. Like I said in Blues Brothers, we're on a mission from God. Don't you blast me here. Don't you blast me. I like that movie. Come on. Thank you. Screws down through the holes. Ah. I'll get them out when I get to them. All right, so we removed the covers. I'm going to take these reset buttons off. Get them out of the way. Now we're going to take off the RF shield for the ColecoVision board. I have the RF shields removed out of my systems only because I don't want the computer to overheat and run hot. And I really don't care if people near me get to listen to AM radio or not. Now notice, see the screws? Probably didn't notice the early ones. Long ones, short ones. These short, wide ones, that's what goes on the front, holding that cover on. Not the long ones that he had on there. So he mixed the screws up. But we'll put it back together the right way. The long ones go holding the case together and holding things down. That up there. Very clean in there too. Look at that. Very clean system. So this is the ColecoVision board. This is almost identical to the motherboard of a ColecoVision. Difference being is that this one has some chips here, buffer chips, and things have been moved around slightly. The ColecoVision doesn't have the buffer chips. Instead, the buffer chips are on the cable that connects to the atom board that's below it. So we got that one out of the way. Now let's go in here. Again, these are the wrong screws. You want to use the longer ones with the smaller heads so that they don't touch any traces when you're screwing them down. The wire is good there. I have to unhook. Oh, get back here. Screw came out. And you decide I'm running away. Put me on the floor. The screw came out. Now I just got one more left over here. Let's just see if I can get that one out so I don't have to worry about it again. Come on, out of the, thank you, out of the hole. All right, now to get the ColecoVision board off, we have to unhook this RF shielding ground cable thingy right here. It's screwed to that. Then it's screwed to the monitor out. Screws over there to the side. So it's kind of chintzy the way it's made. All these wires. Remove the monitor out connector here. And I dropped the screw. I'll get that screw back. Now the board should be able to move it up. We lift it up and out and unhook that. So there is the ColecoVision board. Again, very clean. Put this off to the side. RF shielding for the ColecoVision board. Now we have the atom board down here. To remove it, we, un we have to remove the RF shielding. You have to unscrew this, loosen these up, unscrew those. I don't know how far down I'm gonna get yet. Let me just remove the RF shielding first. Cause I wanna see if something, I have an idea of what may be wrong with this. And I shouldn't have to go too digging too deep into there to have it, to figure it out. But now he did say when he worked on it, that he tried to swap chips out and stuff. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing is that he tried to do that. Bad thing is hopefully you put him back in the right place. Otherwise that may be why we have a problem. But I have other atom boards and I can compare and see which one is this what. Come on screws. Here we go. RF shield out. And do you happen to notice what I see floating right there? You see this? That's not a good thing. Somebody didn't put the computer back together and that's not what I thought was wrong with it. I'm going to assume that is probably the problem right there. Right there, right there. Do you see that? You see that, don't you? I'm gonna get the other camera because I wanna point this out. Because this is one of those things that you always should check. I should have shook the computer first. It's a nice motherboard in that. It doesn't have the socket there, but look at that. I just want to get this. 
I want to zoom in on this with the handy cam. Look at that. Things you don't do when you fix computers. You don't leave the, R, uh, the ROMs floating around inside the computers. I had a feeling though that the problem was not going to be that. And I, it's possible that it still may not work with this. I mean, it's quite possible that's not the problem. But I'm going to assume it is. But my thought was, and I'm still going to check it, is over here on this end, see these yellow tantalum capacitors? I had one come to me where the capacitor was blown out because the person had put the data drive in wrong. It wasn't me. It was somebody else. They put the data drive in wrong and it shorted it. But these seem to be okay so far. I do notice something. Look at these ceramic RAM chips. That's pretty. Anything else interesting on this one? Yeah, I know you're like, Millie, put the ROM in, turn it on, see if it works. We'll get there. We'll just study this thing. Yeah, that is fascinating that it's got these ceramic RAM chips in here. All right, so the ROM is loose. Which one is it? I have to look at the ROM numbers here and compare them to my others and try to figure out which one goes where and make sure we got the right ones in the right place. Don't want me sticking old Donkey Kong in there. That ain't going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off here in a moment and take a look. First off, let me just... Yeah, another screw. Like I said, I should have done the shake test. I didn't do the shake test and that kind of bothers me that I didn't shake it first. Normally I shake a computer before I plug it in. Just to make sure nothing's loose. That is not something that would have popped out in transit. This right here is a, re if you're curious, this is a little resistor that goes under some of the ROMs. Some computers have them, some don't. Again, it's a Clegal Vision thing, or Clegal thing. They're not sure what they want to do with everything, how it was working. So yeah, I'm going to Turn the camera off. I'm going to get me another board. I'm going to look at the ROMs and compare them and see which one goes where and slap that in there. Quickly throw this thing back together and see if it turns on. Okay, so we're back here. I went and got me a bad board. Obviously, you can see it's bad, bad. Everything's bad. 